What is it good y'all? Today we're going to be painting this uh, cork decoy and I'm going to be taking y'all through it. I'm going to turn this into a big diver um, like I did that one over there. That's a buffle head. But I'm going to be taking this and turning it into a diver. Uh, I think that I might be doing a ring neck actually. So um, we'll get into it. The first thing that I'm going to do is take some matte clear coat and I'm going to seal this so that way the cork is sealed and then i'm gonna paint over it so i'm gonna go spray that and i'll be right back Here on getting it outdoors. Alrighty, so now that we got this thing all um, clear coated, I didn't clear coat the head for a reason. Um, it's so I can get the detail on there but basically clear coated it uh, this is just uh, rust-oleum matte clear enamel and I just coated it and it's soaking in right now and that's gonna seal up everything since cork is a very porous material um, I'm actually gonna do a second coat So if you live in the south this time, time of year, you know it's uh, it's hot, especially 10 o'clock at night. It's hot for no reason. But basically, clear coated it. It's kind of shiny now, but this will matten up. And uh, I'll show you uh, how I'm going to paint it. All right, so this is a pre-painted uh, cork decoy that I've already done. As you can see from the bottom that it is cork. Um, this is a buffle head. Now they are super oversized, but that's okay because we want them to be seen from very far off. And uh, if you guys don't know that uh, duck's depth perception is kind of terrible. That's why whenever you're hunting waterfowl species, you can use decoys that are this big and they're not gonna tell the difference. So as you can see there that it is shiny right now, but this will actually kind of come out like chalk a little bit, a little rough, and it's not gonna be shiny when it's done. So right here, you can already see what I'm talking about, that this isn't gonna come out like shiny. Back here, it doesn't look shiny to me. It looks shiny to the camera because I'm shining a bunch of light on it, but it looks just like the paint whenever it was done. So 
So as you can see on the head, where that wood is, it's not shiny. It doesn't really reflect that light very well. And on the back, it's not super reflective. Kind of like the head, not super reflective. The back, not super reflective neither. And that's the great part about this matte paint is that it gives those feather-like appearances because ducks aren't shiny. Never will they ever be shiny. Really trying to do with these is I'm trying to get at every single angle that I possibly can since there's those big divots and I will fill paint with those and then we'll spray over them again. But you really want this cork to be sealed. Um, so a matte clear like this, uh, if you wanted to, depending on what color you're going to paint them, just paint the whole thing a base color and then go over and paint it. Um, but you really just want to get them sealed. Um, so what I'm going to be doing with these is I'm going to throw a picture up right here actually. Um, I'm going to be running a long line, uh, long, I'll get some more decoys in the future and I'll probably end up making some out of foam and whatnot um, because they're super easy, they're super light and you can make a long line out of them. But uh, for now what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them all out in a line because for some reason ducks, like, they just, divers especially, like to be in a line. Um, they'll come in in a line and they will inevitably get shot in a line and the land in a line. Alrighty, so as you can see on this one, it's not shiny at all. This this camera picks up a lot of light, but the wood's not shiny. That's just in the wood grain. Um, that's not wet or anything. But inevitably, inevitably, it didn't come out shiny at all. And that's the, that's the great part about matte. If you're just gonna go over your decoys just to keep them up, put matte clear on them but don't put too much because it will come out milky, especially over dark colors. Alrighty, as you can see here, this pre-painted decoy, nothing came out shiny. That's the great thing about this mat, and I can't say enough about it. Um, if you can get super flat or like super matte, do that because you'll t it'll take less for one and you'll get the same result, except even more just I don't even know, Matt. All right, so on this one, I did an extra coat just to show you what I was talking about with it being milky. This is what I'm talking about. This should look like this, right? And I got this edge a little bit too much, but this is gonna get covered up by paint, so it doesn't really matter. But this is what I'm talking about. I did like four or five coats on this. You only need one or two, right? So let me walk over here and I'll show y'all. A little milky on the bottom because I wanted it to be I wanted it to be super sealed down there. But basically, this is what it should look like. Matte color showing through, but no milky anywhere. Um, so this is what it should look like when you're done. This was coated two times very lightly, and I know that it's sealed because it's kind of hard and plasticky now. And uh, this has a plasticky feel, the head has a plasticky feel, so that means that it is coated properly. And I did do it a little milky on the bottom on purpose because I wanted it to be super sealed since there was no paint down there or anything. But basically, I'll walk back over here and I'll show y'all. This is what I'm talking about when I say that it's milky. Um, so now I'm gonna get into the painting portion of these and I'll show y'all what I'm gonna do. All right, so you'll notice that the audio quality probably just improved. I got my headphones because the air conditioning is super, super loud. But basically what I got here and what I'm going to be painting these two with, I am going to be making these ring necks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and paint the eyes since they are gold. And I'm going to mix these to make gray when I need gray. And basically the only other colors that you need is black and white. And I have a foam brush here and I have some uh, detail brushes. But basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint the whole thing. Or I'll show you here in a second. Alright, so when you get this paint, you want to shake it real good. Get all the filaments and stuff, all the pigments mixed up really well. So I suggest about 15 seconds because these are quite large. And then what I'm going to do, since one brush of this is going in this color and then one is going in this color, I'm just going to pull one of these out. I'm going to pop the top on my paint and then I'm going to go into this lid right here and get the lid paint. 
And for a ring neck, I'm going to outline what I need to be white and gray and white. So probably start about here and just make a line from where you need your color to be. And then everything, it's like making your own coloring book basically. Cut back in whenever I got my stuff traced. All right, so roughly what I got here is my color outline. So this right here is gonna be gray, and then all of this is gonna be white. Now obviously I'll have to change it up, like extend this out further and whatnot, but this is roughly what I'm talking about right here. So all of this in here is gonna be white, and then all of this in here is gonna be gray. And then the rest of everything else is gonna be black. That's the first thing that you need to do. Another thing, look at a great picture. I'll throw the couple pictures up here that I was looking at. And um, so I'm just going to fill this in. And I will show you the method that I do for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, pour it on here, and then I'm going to fill it in and then make it kind of gloppy at first. And then I'll smooth it out. So I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. I just poured it over and it gives a really smooth look. Now, obviously you've got some pinholes in here that you'll have to fix up and everything, but other than that, it looks great. And I am actually probably gonna extend the gray way up in here and just swoop it back. But other than that, I'll go ahead and do this to the other side and I'll show you um, whenever I do the gray. So basically before I put on the gray in here, I, oh, I got some paint on me. That's normal though. So before I put the gray on in here, I am going to cover the back in black acrylic paint. Shake it up real good. Just like this. Let it drip down the side, doesn't matter. Clean it off later. Just cover the top. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna push that paint around because it doesn't have to be perfect. And we kinda want it to fill in everything that we can. Push the paint around, don't really try and work it in too much. And then we'll do brushwork around these edges. But I'm just gonna come back here and I'm just gonna work it in, work it in. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll do a couple blotches here to get in some of those kind of crevices. And then we'll just brush it on. And then this is where coming at and looking at your picture is in handy. Because I know that the head is black. So I'm just going to follow up the head here. Side to side, up and down. And... Just gonna paint the top of the head black with that extra paint. Then drag this out as much as I can. Blotch out some of that paint, come over here and just dab it on. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. Brush a little bit here brush a little bit there but yeah just pour some push it around so like I was saying before my camera decided it wanted to quit itself in the application I'm just gonna push it around doesn't have to be perfect right now you're just kind of getting a base coat and I'll come back when that black's all done Alrighty y'all, so I got it painted black. Yeah, it's kind of shiny right now because it's still wet, like really, really wet. Um, but my next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, tan kind of gold color and I'm just gonna paint inside the eyes because I don't got beads or nothing like that. We ain't fancy like that here. These are just gunning decoys. Basically, take your little dollop there, grab your little brush, Take some of this gold right here and just get it in the eyes. Just 
And that's all you're going to do. You're just going to get it in the eyes. And then, when you jack up the black paint, you come over here and you take this. And you just put it all up there. And unjack up the black paint. And then brush it in. Just like that, because you fancy. Then you take it and you put it in front of the fan for a few minutes so it can dry. Now, you got to make sure you do this when your girlfriend's in bed so you can for sure 100% get the paint on her. Oh. Take this, set it like this, and just pull it out so the wind can get on it. Just like that. And then do it like this because you're fancy like that. So the wind blowing on that. Be back when it's dry. All right, so it is dried for the most part. As you can see, some of those deep parts in there are a little moist still. But basically, what I've gone ahead and did, just started graying in the areas that needed to be gray. And I started on the beak, but I'll show you more of the beak later. But yeah, I just started graying in the areas that need to be gray. I think I'm actually just going to swoop them out a little bigger than they should be uh, just to get that real definition in there. But yeah, you still, I still need to paint underneath here, get underneath the tail, um, get underneath here. I'm actually going to paint this brown since it's brown on a real uh, ring neck. But, and then I'm going to bring this gray down so it's just a thin white line instead of this conglomeration, blah, blah, conglomeration of a mess right here. Um, but yeah, just started graying in the areas. I'm gonna bring this one up and then kind of just follow it back down. So I'll show you all that after it's done. All right, so what I did is I re-went over the beak with gray because that other one looked trash. Um, brought these where they needed to be. Um, did it on the other side as well. And then I ended up getting underneath the tail and I actually painted the underside as well to get that extra seal in there. Um, but yeah, next time I'm gonna go over the beak and I'm actually gonna paint that on camera for y'all because I think that's one of the coolest parts to paint. All right, y'all, so I'm just gonna paint the beak here. Um, just keep in mind that this is messy. Like this whole process, a mess. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do here, I am going to get my white I'm going to crack it open take my white here my white brush and I am just going to do a basic line across right here just to get it defined where I want it to come up the other side of the beak and then wait for that to dry a little bit. Get a little gloopy here. So that way it gets thick on there because this is white over a dark color. So it's not gonna show up the first time perfectly. But basically, come up. Just do a white line. That's all I'm doing. And then I'll do white line on top like this. Get this boy thick. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take my black brush which is right here. And I'm going to dip it in this black paint that I've got poured out. And I'm going to paint the nose black. And when I say the nose, I mean the tip of the beak.
Alrighty, that's painted black. And I'm just gonna let that sit here and dry for a second. Grab underneath here, actually. I'm just gonna leave this to dry for a second, blow on it, and I'll be back whenever it's dry and I'll repaint over these white spots. And then I'll actually just throw the nostrils on real quick. Hopefully I don't jack this up like I did last time. One nostril. Two nostril. Now they look terrible, but it don't matter to me. They're hunting decoys. Make them a little oversized. It don't matter to me how they look. Just the fact that they're on there makes me feel better about it. Alrighty, I'll be back whenever this is dry and I'll do another white coat. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like after it is done. Got that beak all painted up nice and pretty. Got them sides put on. And I enjoy it a lot. Looking pretty spiffy. I'll do another one. And uh, I'll definitely use this guy during duck season. It's looking real, real nice. Alrighty, y'all. So I actually realized that I didn't do an outro for this video. So if y'all like the video, like, subscribe, and comment. If I did a good job, tell me that, hey, I did a good job. If you like the video, comment. Say, hey, I like the video, fam. Thanks for it. But um, basically, yeah, I just painted this decoy for y'all. Um, I plan on using these during duck season. Uh, there's some footage for duck season coming up. It opens in September for teal and Thanksgiving day for uh, big ducks. So what I'll be doing is I'll be getting that Thanksgiving day video going for y'all and I'll be getting that teal going for y'all. I don't know if I'm going to get opener or not. It's with work and everything, but um, yeah, uh, squirrel hunting's coming up here in a few days and uh, it's time to get rocking and rolling, but yeah. Hunting videos coming soon. Another paint video. Say hey, show us another decoy paint video, and I'll get it going. Cause I still got one more of these decoys to paint, and uh, I'm planning on doing an, uh, an, another another neck. But if you guys say hey, you know, add a different type of diver to this bread, I'll be like, okay, cool, I'll do that one. But yeah, if you guys like the video, like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you on the next one.